I figured out the TikTok algorithm. In the last week, I've gone from zero to 100,000 followers. And along the way, I learned way more and interviewed fellow TikTokers. That really boosted what the algorithm saw my videos as. Reworked my strategy. It's worked better than I ever thought it would. And even use code to analyze 10,000 TikToks and find averages. But let's start from the beginning. The tech world is more than just phones and computers. So much of tech today is completely intangible. Purely software algorithms, the things that truly run our lives. That's why I started this series, to try and figure out how these algorithms work. But a lot of people pointed out that correlation doesn't equal causation, and just by analyzing TikToks on the For You page isn't going to tell me how the algorithm works. So I had an idea. I have seven days starting today to get as TikTok famous as possible. And throughout these seven days, I'm going to be testing the conclusions I made in the original video. Here's how it's going to work. I've already shot about half of the TikToks I'm going to post, but collectively, I'm going to post 20 TikToks over the course of the next seven days. I'll mostly stick to tech content, but they'll slowly shift into algorithm-related content until the very last one, where I'll be revealing that the audience has actually been part of an experiment the whole time. It'll be our little secret until they find out. Each day, I'm going to be testing my theories by using a controlled TikTok and two experiment posts. The control will be the first TikTok of every day, with no hashtags and no music, so just a plain old video. Then the second TikTok of every day will use hashtags, things that relate to the video, as well as hashtag FYP and hashtag for you. Because as you'll remember from the first video, I found that hashtags, even those ones, don't actually have a big effect on whether or not your video gets promoted. And so here, we'll be testing that. And finally, I'll be testing sound theory. The sound theory also came from the first video. It's just that having a famous sound in the background of your TikTok will help promote your posts better than using a custom sound. Now, obviously I'm not doing dancing TikToks or something where I could put a famous sound in the background but there's a little trick to trick the algorithm into thinking that you are. Put a famous sound in the background of the TikTok and then turn the volume down a bit to zero. Then when the TikTok is posted, it will have a famous sound on the bottom and be tagged under that sound, but you won't actually hear it in the video. It's a weird hack, but I'm thinking it may help that last video of the day each day be promoted. I've already edited the first three TikToks, so I think it's time to post them. Let's see how this goes. The algorithm of TikTok is more influential than nearly any other piece of tech in the world. I've been covering tech on this channel for six years, but there's a reason I switched over to covering this stuff. This is the tech that matters today. TikTok was by far the most downloaded app of 2020, and it's run exclusively by one algorithm. And with TikTok controlling much of our lives, the algorithm was ultimately responsible for much of the thoughts and beliefs of the general public. I don't think a society has ever in history had so much reliance on a single computer software. Most social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, for example, have different outlets for their algorithm to go. The home tab, explore tab, suggested videos. But for TikTok, there's just one place, the For You page. And on the For You page, unlike on YouTube, where you actually have to click on a video, the algorithm of TikTok can literally just force you to watch something. As you're scrolling, it's just the next video it decides to put in front of you. So not only is TikTok's algorithm ultimately the simplest in its objective, but it's also the most powerful. Everything you do on the app comes down to the algorithm, since nearly every video you see is completely and artificially fed to you by what it thinks you'd want to see. And clearly, the algorithm does a good job, because as we said in the last video, the average TikTok user spends 52 minutes a day on the app longer than a 16 year old's attention span. So one algorithm has immense control on one billion people's lives. You see why this is important? But let's check in on how my account's been doing. Okay, four day update. It's 7.30 PM on Wednesday, January 27th. I published my first video on Saturday, January 23rd at 1 PM with zero followers. And we are now at 71,000 followers and 1.3 million likes. Whoa. For one, that's definitely more likes and followers than I've ever gotten on YouTube, and I've been doing that for 495 times longer. But there's a reason for that. TikTok's algorithm is just so much simpler, like we just talked about. And so followers, views, and likes mean something completely different. But let's take a look at what's worked best. My most viewed TikTok was this one, about Apple going backwards, which has 2.8 million 
views. More than twice the view count of my entire YouTube channel, and it's been two days. But unsurprisingly, that was in fact the third TikTok of the day, with a famous sound in the background. At a volume of zero, of course. But hashtags haven't seemed to be helping as much. The difference between videos with hashtags and videos without is negligible, but it's clear that the famous sounds have been seriously helping my posts, and quite honestly, it's worked better than I ever thought it would. The average likes on a post with a famous sound so far has been a ridiculous 237,100. Well, the average likes for a video without a famous sound has been just 15,840. And now that I'm saying that out loud, saying just 15,000 likes sounds absurd to me, but compared to the others, that's nothing. So, midday yesterday, with all the crazy success I'd been getting, I decided to change the plan a bit. I'm going to be posting all my posts from now on exclusively with a famous sound in the background. I mean, we've seen that it clearly works and there's kind of nothing to lose. As ultimately, the real goal is just to get as big as possible in these seven days. And I think the case is pretty much closed. But I'll continue to test the hashtag theory, alternating between videos with hashtags and videos without, just to make sure there is truly no difference. And quite honestly, I was feeling really good and super confident in my plan at this point until this happened. My video was under review. My fast growth, combined with the fact that I was uploading videos through my camera roll, made TikTok suspicious that they weren't original. So they blocked me from posting for a bit. Basically, I was growing so fast they thought I was using bots. But eventually, this video went live. But I haven't posted since, so hopefully my next posts won't have the same issue. Worst case scenario, they deem my account to be fake and I'm not able to upload again for the rest of this experiment. I guess we'll just have to see what happens and I'll talk to you on day six. Regardless of any mishaps with videos being taken down, I think it's pretty clear at this point that things have been working and it opened up the possibility for maybe being able to hit 100,000 followers in one week, but it was going to be close. So I decided to talk to a creator who was absolutely blown up on TikTok, who like me is doing it without doing a single trend. And his name is Justice Shepard. Here he is. I don't know if you even know the answer to this, but why do you think that your TikToks have succeeded? The biggest reason is because when people see like a, like a problem and they think that they can solve it, they are tuned in and want to watch the whole thing and see if they can do it you know, in their head. It's sort of satisfying, like seeing if you can get the answer. So I think the watch time from those people that watched the whole thing really boosted what the algorithm saw my videos as. Pick something that you're passionate about, focus on that, and grab the user's attention in, in the first three seconds. Because if you don't, somebody else will. Typically long videos, like 60 second videos, people aren't gonna watch it. So I would suggest keeping it no longer than 40 seconds. I think every single viral video I've ever posted was no longer than 40 seconds. 40 seconds was like the cutoff. You gotta make TikToks in that Goldilocks zone from 20 to 40 seconds or medium length. Or at least I thought. Let's check in on how my account's been doing now. Okay, it's day seven and some things have happened. First, here's the update on the videos being reviewed. It still happens and it's gotten worse. It started to get better and videos were only taking a few minutes to get reviewed, but then for whatever reason, TikTok decided to take down one of my videos due to illegal activities and regulated goods. It happened to be a video about TikTok's algorithm, so maybe they thought it was saying too much? I don't know. But I just decided to post the video again and now it's back up without any issues. But let's get to the reason you're here, the follow update. We're just about to cross 90,000 followers and we're at 1.6 million likes and I've got five hours left in the challenge. I've also switched my content to making more algorithm focused videos, which happened to do a bit worse than the consumer technology related videos I was making before. So the growth has gone down a bit, but it taught me a lesson as I quickly realized that the audience on TikTok was not the same as my audience on YouTube. You guys may be more interested in social media algorithms and content creation, but the literal nine year olds of TikTok are more interested in TikToks where they can argue over Apple versus Android in the comments section. And that's not to diss TikTok. There are a lot of intelligent people on the app, but that general demographic explains why educational content tends not to do very well on TikTok and drama 
tends to do a lot better. Now, I never truly made content anywhere near drama, but the video that did the best for me was about controversial Apple rumors. So, although it wasn't what would typically appear on TikTok Room, it garnered a ton of conversation and comments, which is what you want on TikTok more than anywhere else. But let's get to a quick update on the hashtags. Not much has changed, but I gotta go because I have one more final TikTok to shoot. So I'll see you when the experiment is finally over. So things seem to be going well on that front, but this video wouldn't be complete without a deep dive into analytics. In the first video, I took a look at 100 TikToks. Today, we've stepped it up. We've analyzed more TikToks than views this video will probably get, although maybe you could change that. Smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. And we've gone for not a thousand, not 5,000, but one TikTok. Just kidding. 10,000 TikToks analyzed. And let me show you what I found. So out of the first 10,000 TikToks that appear on the For You page when logged out with no preferences, I found that 79.2% of videos on the For You page had hashtags in them. No surprise given the popularity of the infamous hashtag FYP. But when looking at the average likes, a video with no hashtags averages 718,423, while a video with hashtags averages 547,252. Now, of course I'm not saying that adding hashtags is going to hurt your posts, but as we've covered before, there's very little evidence that hashtags help your posts either. But there was tons of other interesting data too, like how 16.5% of all people on the For You page were verified, yet out of all 10,000 TikToks, Charlie D'Amelio appeared zero times. And there was a ton of other stats too, like how original sounds compared to famous sounds in the background where this data didn't agree with my last video. In fact, this data showed that videos with original sounds tended to get more likes, which goes against a fundamental TikTok belief. But based on my own evidence and the evidence of countless others, that one may just be an element of statistical randomness. And it's possible that this data just happened to lean the other way. I don't know. And I've linked all 10,000 TikToks worth of data in the description. Have fun with it. But let's take a moment to look at the final results of my seven day experiment. 100K. We reached 100K. Okay, actually we haven't. I finished with 99K, but by the time this video comes out, we'll be at 100. And you ever heard of rounding? I thought so. So. Here's what I learned. First of all, I learned before I even started this that the algorithm needs individual videos. They don't like series. Sure, part twos are great, but you need to be able to watch either part and understand it. Like The Office. You could probably start at a random episode in season six, having never seen the show before and be fine. But in a show like Stranger Things, starting at season two wouldn't make any sense. So on TikTok, the videos need to do well on their own. I know because not only is that what I did, but it's what I didn't do a little while ago. Just for kicks, I tried uploading a condensed version of one of my old videos to YouTube in six parts and nobody watched it because you couldn't watch each video alone and the algorithm doesn't like that because the way TikTok's built, it only shows you one video from a single creator at a time. But I also learned that TikTok's algorithm likes things that are different. I may not have done any trends, but that's just it. It's different. I was the only one on TikTok filming with a nice camera, making informational videos, and still stirring the pot with a bit of controversial Apple rumors. It didn't matter that what I was doing wasn't popular. Doing what's popular is a myth. Why would anyone watch your content if all you're doing is what everyone else is doing? The fact that I did something so unique to TikTok by completely ignoring the trends was what the algorithm liked most. It didn't matter that I didn't really follow the video length data I found or that I didn't use a famous sound when I first started. It's just that I was doing something no one had ever seen before. Think of the algorithm like a person. This person just wants to be entertained. So they're going to watch some of the videos with trends and dances, but eventually they're going to get bored. So they're gonna wanna change things up. And at the moment, TikTok, more than any other platform, is full of ripoffs and copycats. So doing something new is going to change things for the algorithm. The algorithm's looking for new content to recommend. It has a sense that everyone's sick of the top influencers on the app lacking any originality. And with the algorithm's ultimate goal being to just keep people on the app as long as possible, it wants new things to show everyone. It needed me this week and it needs you. Let's change TikTok for the better, starting with a like on this video and maybe a subscribe too, because we're going to be diving into much more in the tech world than just algorithms. But every day, 
these algorithms take up more and more of our lives. And it's more evident nowhere other than TikTok. And if the algorithm is going to take over our lives, feeding out content day in and day out, let's give it some good content to feed us. I gotta go get back on TikTok and continue the grind. And as always, I'll see you next time.